Happy Sabbath everyone, happy Sabbath again. Uh, we are continuing, as I mentioned, I'm doing uh, um, more videos together. So last time we looked at the last part of chapter 3 and now we're continuing with chapter 4. And let's start right now. Uh, let's see, thank you. Hear ye, children, the, the instruction of a father and attend to know understanding. Now, what does father mean? Well, father means father, right? Like, basically father. We're not going to go into deep meaning of father, but we know what father means. Okay, so. We know about understanding. Verse number two. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. You know, so the, the start of this, listen to a father's instruction. So do you understand when people are trying to remove fathers out of the household, what happens? See, to all the people that are trying to remove the father from the household, um, they may not regret it for the moment. But that child is going to lack something so important. When that child grows up, ooh. Mothers, are you listening? If you think um, your child, I don't want to say that, is, but I'm going to say that actually. If you think your child needs you more than the father, um, I don't think it's the case. I don't think it's the case. If you look at how single parent hold, parent household is doing, well, most of them are mothers led. I kind of want to see a contrast, a compare and contrast between the single father's household versus single mother's household and see how the child becomes when they grow up. That would be a great, a great thing to talk about one day. But let's keep on moving. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Hmm. Why did it say, For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother? You see, the thing is, what mothers do versus what fathers do is two different things. It's very interesting that when the child, they always like to say, uh, the girls are daddies or the, or for the dads. And uh, I, the, most of the fathers tell me, well, I was, the day I became a father was when I got a daughter. I'm like, so whenever you had a son, weren't you not a father? Oh no, when I have a son and my wife became a mother, I'm like, that makes no sense whatsoever. The father is needed more in the household than the mother. It makes no sense at all. I cannot imagine somebody, me, I would say, well, um, I have a son. Okay, I don't have children, okay? I cannot imagine myself saying oh, right now that I have a son and then, well, I'm not a father yet because I don't have a daughter. Like, what? But as you can see here, he says, I was a my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Funny. Why would that, why would that be the case? Let me tell you why. Because the way a mother shows love to her son is not the same for the father. Right? You see the mother always trying to cuddle the son. Oh, you doing okay? Hi, baby. My baby is sick, man. The father doesn't do that. So, of course, when you look at it, when you look at it, when you look at it in a man's perspective, you're going to be like, oh, the father is not paying attention to the son. The father is not doing this for the son. But we just have different ways of showing love. If my son, if I have a son, and he were to be running and he falls down, 
my reaction of the child compared to my wife's reaction is going to be different. She's going to be like running to him. Oh, baby, are you okay? Trying to trying to kiss the knee because he got... I'll be like, get up and then shake yourself. But because I don't behave like a woman, they would look at it as, okay, he doesn't love the son. But in reality, my way of doing things would help my son further down the line than the mother's. Why? Because I'm trying to teach him how to move on with life when hard time comes. Whereas the mother is trying to, um, I would say, sugarcoat the hard time in a sense. But this is not about men versus women. It's right here in the Bible. It's right here. It's like, okay, I was my father's son, but tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. But yet, who taught him? The father. What did you say? Keep my commitment and leave. So to all the people that are thinking that we men are not needed in a household, you can be my guest. Let me know how it goes for you when your son gets older. It's not going to look good, but let's move on. Verse number five. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither doctrine, or no, neither decline from from the word of my mouth. Forsake her not. What? Forsake her not. Remember, her. What is her? Not the mother. It's wisdom. Forsake wisdom not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. If we are talking about the mother, there is a time when you would not be. You will not have a mother anymore. One day she may die. But whatever wisdom you acquired is going to be with you until you die. So yes, get wisdom. Always learn something new. Get understanding. Do not forget it. Preserve it. Because that, when you know what you know, People cannot fool you. Like COVID, people were being fooled by COVID stuff. And you had a bunch of celebrities on your head. Oh, you're not vaccinated? You can die. Oh, you had... Remember that? But people can see it is most likely those that were vaccinated that actually died. When you know, people cannot fool you. Okay? So... Get wisdom, do not forsake it, it, and she will preserve you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, verse number 7, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Remember, there is a difference between wisdom and understanding. Wisdom comes from your experience. Understanding is knowing what is right from wrong. As you are getting wisdom, don't forget to do what is right. <laughs> I know this is not how the world works. I know this is not how business works. Business is about lying. Oh, most of them. It's about fraud. It's about finding shortcuts and not doing the best you can. But in God's kingdom, there's no shortcuts. Though those who are trying to get shortcuts to get to heaven, they would never make it. You either do what is right or what is wrong. <laughs> okay? So as you're getting better, as you're getting more wisdom, also keep on doing what is right to the fullest. Let's move on. Verse number 8. Exalt her. What? Wisdom. Exalt understanding, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor, and thou dost embrace when thou dost embrace thee or oh, her. Which means, even if people will say anything about you, 
they cannot say something bad about you according to your behavior. When you do what is right all the time, people may not like it, but they cannot say anything bad about it because they cannot find anything to say something bad about you. Doesn't matter. Keep doing what is right. She shall give thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Funny. Even if even if the person is right and everybody's laughing at them or at that person, you know what's funny? That person will still have a head high. Why? Because they can laugh, but they cannot say that person did something wrong. And who wants to be told they had done something wrong? Who? Nobody. Exactly. So, she will give the, your head an honor of grace and a crown of glory. A crown of glory is only to those who've done right. Yes. A crown of glory is only given to those who have done what is right. Or I should say, who have done God's will instead. Yeah, verse number 10. Heal, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right path. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Now, what does that mean, straightened? Well, it means to be in distressed, narrow, be vexed, you know, be in trouble. Why? Because you are going in the right path. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy but it will surely lead you to the right destination, right? Now, you shall not stumble. It doesn't mean literally, but if you keep your eye on the prize, which is Jesus Christ, no matter what the devil does, you're still going to go to the right path. Those who stumble, they leave the right path. I would suggest you, there's a movie it's not, it might not be 100% accurate, biblically speaking, but it's a great movie. I think it's called The, the Pilgrim's Journey. I watched that movie. Yeah, it's a great movie. Except for a couple of errors. But The Pilgrim's Journey, you will see how many times we, myself included, stumble from the right path. Why? Because we, because we decided to listen to somebody else. Lastly, let's look at the last part because we're not going to look at the whole chapter. Verse number 13. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her for she is thy life. We're going to stop right there because the next part is going to be interesting. <laughs> so, we, we, you know what, uh, let me just close with that. Get wisdom, get understanding, okay? Forsake it not. Yeah. Why? Because the principal thing is to get wisdom. And again, food for thought.